This had better be important. Yes, sir. The American agent has infiltrated the X lab facility. back to the combat footage show my name's ronnie i'll be your host hit the like button uh drop a comment in the chat let me know where you guys are chiming in from it's good to see you happy monday guys we got washington mexico uh tijuana hmm. that's wild phoenix arizona what's up colorado virginia beach portland uh philly what's up my wife's from philly insufferable <sighs> you know i went to a uh, philly I, I, i'm i'm born and raised uh in the commonwealth the only the only flag in the United States with nudity on it, which, you know, hey, whatever, that's cool. Uh, but we went to a uh, we went to an Eagle, Eagles game one time, and I wore my Redskins jersey. I, ex- I, I expected to get jumped, but it actually went swimmingly. Uh, I don't think you uh, Philly folks are as bad as people say. Uh, anyway, welcome back. Hi, it's good to see you. Um, welcome back to the Combat Footage Show. Today, we've got a Monday edition that has a little bit of extra footage in it, uh, largely because I wasn't able to stream Friday since I was on the phone fighting with the Xfinity robot uh, to turn my internet back on. Uh, apparently, I run two separate dedicated networks, one for you know my personal stream, which this show will automatically redirect you over to that at the end. I think it prompts the chat, and you have to click on the chat or something. Uh, but one for that, and uh, one for the rest of the house, Um, so I guess my personal stream and this stream, anyway, the streams are all on a separate network and they decided to cut off one of my access points. Guess which one? This one. So, um, I got kicked, (laughs) I got kicked off the phone with the robot twice. Um, but on my fourth try, I was able to get to an individual and a person. Um, she was nice. I just, you know, kind of felt bad because by that time I was already a little bit frustrated. Anyway, we're here. Uh, We're going to be talking a lot about Israel tonight. Um, We're going to see a little bit of footage prior to the ceasefire. We'll talk about the ceasefire. We'll talk about some of the things that uh, came to be from that ceasefire. Uh, We'll talk about expectations for after the ceasefire. We're also going to check in with our favorite commies out of Myanmar and their fight against the the military junta, junta that took power back in 2021. It's got some wild stuff coming out of there. Then we're going to circle all the way around to Ukraine and some of the ground that's been gained near Avdivka by Russia, a small industrial area to the southeast of Avdivka. We'll talk about that fight, and we'll talk about some of the fighting around Avdivka as well, to include um, some discussion around Hirson. I want to first start with the map, though. Let's start. uh, We're going to start in Israel tonight. Here's the map. And, excuse me, there isn't a whole lot to cover on the map. There have been gains since the last time we were here. But as it stands now, Israel, inside of Gaza, and Hamas are in the midst of a ceasefire. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the ceasefire. Uh, We will see a little bit of footage surrounding it, uh, specifically the exchange of hostages and exactly where that took place. Uh, Clear up a little bit of confusion, at least based on my understanding of the total amount of prisoners that have been exchanged, prisoners, uh, you know, hostages that have been exchanged. Um, because I think there was a little bit of confusion about that. I've seen 24, I've seen 25 Israelis, um, Filipinos, uh, Thai nationals, but hopefully we'll be able to clear up a little bit of that. There has been gains in Beit Hanun. We'll see some footage from pre-ceasefire there that would have taken place last week. But since we weren't here on Friday to go over that, we're going to go over it again tonight. Uh, We should see some footage mm, from the West Bank as well. Let's scroll out and you know jump over there. Come, come, come. There we go. Uh, From the West Bank here, I want to say in Janine, 
We'll see some footage up here. And we'll see just a little bit of footage from Hezbollah in the north. Now, it's important for me to note, uh, sp specific to the ceasefire, uh, we're not, you know, again, we're not a news team. So if you're hoping to get the current and most up-to-date information on the ceasefire and the geopolitics surrounding the war, I'd suggest you go and find somewhere else. We're a, we're a footage team. We're trying to document and archive as much footage, combat footage as possible. But specific to the ceasefire, it's important to note that neither Israel nor Hamas have acknowledged either side violating that ceasefire. I saw early on in the ceasefire some, you know, Twitter accounts and um, non-affiliated accounts claiming one side violated or the other. Neither side has claimed a violation either from themselves or from the other relative to the ceasefire. In fact, the ceasefire itself was announced on the 22nd, which would have been last Wednesday, last hump day. Uh, to take effect starting on the 24th. That has now been extended. The initial reports were that it was being negotiated to be extended by an additional four days. So with the initial, initial four-day ceasefire, it was being reported that it would be extended by four days. If I understand correctly, it's been extended by an additional two. Now, the uh, criteria for that extension is ultimately meeting an ultimatum or a an amount of hostages released by Hamas. Uh, essentially, the ratio as it stands right now is uh, one to three. For every one hostage released by Hamas, three prisoners are being released by Israel. Now, let's go all the way back, though, and take a look at some of the footage from the hostage handoff. I want to show you guys where this took place, though. So we're going to pull up Google Earth, head over there and give you an understanding of where in Gaza this next video took place. Uh, I got to I got to stop using the I got to stop using that and just start using N like we talked about. So it took place right right here around middle of Gaza, right inside of Gaza City relative to the campaign map just so we can see where that is. It's an area of Gaza City that is still not yet really touched by the IDF. 17 total hostages were released by Hamas and 39 prisoners from Israel were released. The breakout of that 17, I'll show you while we watch this video. There's no sound to certain portions of this video. But Hamas released the hostages, which consisted of 10 Israelis, and either four Thai nationals or three Thai nationals and one Filipino. That's a little bit unclear to me. Again, it's not really our focus. Our focus is footage, you know, the geopolitics surrounding things. I wouldn't necessarily call this geopolitics surrounding it, but this is not necessarily combat footage. I think it's relevant because the majority of the footage that we're going to watch later on tonight uh, took place prior to the ceasefire. There has not been any combat footage from inside of Gaza since the ceasefire. I should, I should rephrase that. There has not been any combat inside of Gaza since the ceasefire. Just reading through the chat here. Now, some, some folks have kind of pointed out facial expressions and things, and I've got, you know, thoughts about that. You know, I'm not going to speculate on it, but on, on from one perspective, they're probably happy as hell. They're pr probably ha just happy as a, you know, pig rolling around in the mud. You know, I don't mean to. I don't mean to use that phrase. I'm. It's not derogatory. It's just me being a redneck saying that. Um, so they're smiling. They're just happy. Now, on the other hand, some are claiming that they're kind of being forced to smile, uh, waving. You know, saying goodbye in a nice way. That's without speaking to them individually. 
it's really difficult to know what's going through their head. Now, one of the things that's interesting to me is that Israel has barred at least some, or there was a report of Israel barring these hostages or these previous hostages that have now been released from speaking to the media. Now, that could be for a myriad of reasons. Uh, that could be simply because of the emotional distress that that could bring. Uh, that could be because Israel wants to debrief them first and get a better understanding of what they dealt with without the media asking leading questions, because we know that the media tends to do so. But that's the footage that I have of the hostage release. Now I want to jump into, ah, one more thing. One more thing. Now, the IDF spokesman for Arab media wanted to make sure and put out a statement specifically regarding the ceasefire that Israel was not done. <laughs> now, what he's, what he's effectively saying is we're not done. You know, this is still an active combat zone. Do not return to the north. Um, and at the end of this ceasefire, we will be resuming operations. When exactly that takes place, I'm not sure. The way, it, the way it's been working right now, based on Hamas's official releases that they've put out, is that once they meet that ultimatum point uh, on the amount of hostages that they released, and this is coming from, com coming from their official releases on, on Telegram, uh, they are effectively able to negotiate for an additional 24 hours. I want to jump over to some of the combat footage, though, that we have. We're going to be starting in the north, up by Lebanon. Let's go back to Google Earth here. Going up here. We're going to see IDF strikes that took place on or around the 22nd. These were targeting, reportedly, Hezbollah infrastructure. Hezbollah. Hez... Here. These would have been covered last Friday, but like I said, since we weren't here, I actually did publish this initial portion of videos to Twitter when I realized we weren't going to be able to go live. But uh, since we weren't here Friday, we're going to, you know, essentially recover them. We'll have a few newer things sprinkled in here, though. Thanks, Doug. I see you, man. Compiled Tech, thank you for the $2. Is it a crime if you threaten AI? No, but if we don't stop f***ing around, that's how you get Skynet. I'm just saying. I want to say, I want to say, uh, didn't Elon Musk just release uh, Grok, Gronk, Grok or something? And it's going to have like an AI analysis button under every tweet. Imagine that. We're going to start fact-checking people with AI and holding AI to be the authoritative voice over other human beings. That's wild. It's wild. One step closer. On or around the 25th of November, a surface-to-air missile out of Lebanon was fired. Uh, Israel intercepted it uh, pretty much right away. Here it is. This was on the 25th at 2.42 in the morning. On or around. I had OA in my notes. It goes up, and it's gone. The reason I wanted to show this is it's, it's interesting from a capabilities perspective, right? This is a surface-to-air missile. You know, presumably targeting some form of Israeli air. That would have been coming from Hezbollah. Little videos like that. You know, I've talked before about how you shouldn't derive overarching conclusions f from individual pieces of video. What you can take, though, is information on, you know, TTPs, capabilities, from a capabilities perspective that tells us that Hezbollah has at least some level of anti-air capability. 
whether that was specifically um, some form of man pad, uh, exact, you know, man portable air defense. I'm not certain. More than likely it was. Um, but interesting nonetheless. We're going to move to the West Bank. We're going to check in on the Ibn Sina Hospital. Now, we've, we, we, we checked in here before. Let's go to Google Earth. You guys might remember this. Where Israel previously had done a raid. And there was... Uh, this is the hospital here, right? The, the coordinates you're looking at are going to be a perspective, point of view, where it was filmed from. But this is the hospital here. The last time we checked in on the Ibn Sina hospital... <clears throat> Israel had done a raid and, you know, presumably chased some form of a vehicle into the parking lot, maybe. And uh, you know, we had footage of them pulling, uh, I think they were like M4s, maybe out of the trunk. Uh, military equipment, they were escorting the medical workers out. If you recall that video, that's where we are again. Gunfire at Ibn Sina is what we're going to watch here. Two videos specifically from two different perspectives. One from probably uh, the perspective you just saw and one from the opposite side. Turning the audio all the way up on this one. Now, it's important to note that the ceasefire, if I understand correctly, I'm happy to be corrected. Any stupid thing that comes out of my mouth, I hope you guys correct me on it. That's what we're here for. That's what this stream is here for, for you guys to say, hey, don't be stupid. But if I understand correctly, the West Bank and the raids that Israel continues to do in the West Bank and the small engagements that we're seeing, not unlike this one, are not covered by that ceasefire. And that ceasefire is very specifically only for... Gaza. Here is a similar perspective that I think you've seen before, probably recorded by the same person because it's pretty familiar. Uh, those weren't far away. So small gunfights happening somewhere around the Ibn Sina hospital. The next one we're not going to watch, all right? We're not going to. I'm going to paste the link in the chat for you uh, because what it is is Palestinians hanging two Palestinians um, supposedly for supporting Israel. I think it's relevant. I think it's pertinent. And I'm going to paste a link for you in the chat, but we're not going to watch it. Um, it's available out there. Um, and I'm making sure you guys are able to see it. Follow along. There's the link. Provides no real value or context from a combat footage perspective. That's why we're not going to watch it. I think it provides a little bit of context from... A populist perspective. Let's move on, though. We're going to be jumping into Gaza now. This is going to be an IDF strike montage just prior to the ceasefire. One of those strikes is going to kick us off right here in Beit Hanun. Moral perspective. That's a great, uh, that's a much more eloquent way of putting that. Moral perspective. Here is that IDF strike montage. There is a video, Mystical Goat. There is a video. Only photos? No. No, one of the one of the four that's listed in that link that I provided you guys is a video. Wouldn't that be the IAF? Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. 
Show me. Scroll up in the chat. Israel is a monster who torments Palestine. Um, I mean, the, the video I just linked in the chat for you guys is Palestine tormenting Palestine. All right. Now we're going to be moving to, I want to say, Sheikh Zayed neighborhood. Neighborhood. Here. It's between Jabalia, Jabalia? I think Jabalia. Yeah. Nobody said I was good at uh, pronunciations. Jabalia and Beit Hanun. Sheikh Zayed. Sheikh Zayed. Where we're going to see footage from the Givari Brigade. Reportedly taking a Hamas headquarters. Footage. Oh. That footage is coming up for you now. That's only pictures. Am I going to have to watch the video? Stand by. Mm -mm. Scroll down. When you go to that link, scroll down. Scroll down. Video's right there. Thanks, Jaji. Now, according to the IDF, and switching back to the video that we're watching here, they were put... Mm, no, I was going to talk about that as it was coming up, but... Uh, they reportedly, obviously, found a tunnel entrance. That's an interesting-looking tunnel entrance, so it's, it's, it's a cylinder. Um, but a mock-up of Israel's Gaza border, along with a rocket production and launch site. Now, I want to see if I can find that rocket production and launch site. This is what they were claiming was the rocket production and launch site. This specifically here. Uh, which are mortars. But... Still a lot of mortars. All right, let's bring it up. Another interesting one that I thought provided a little bit of context. Looks like somebody deleted that one. So we're going to have to move past that. And that's all right. We're going to move to another area here in Gaza, here, where we're going to see the Maglan unit. Now, I've got two videos from this, and we're going to do a little bit of a, have a little bit of a discussion around cool technology, talk about the spike and the iron sting, uh, but we'll get there when we get there. First, we're going to watch a video. What you're looking at right here is the Spike SR. It's a shoulder launch anti tank guided missile. It's actually one of a few different versions of the Spike. Uh, you've got the Spike MR, which is kind of its medium. Uh, you've got an ER. Um, you have mountable options for the Apache. It's actually a super interesting system. 
Uh, do recommend a Google on that one. Let's bring it up. And we're going to actually see that same unit using the Iron Sting, which is a laser-guided mortar system. Now, you'll see, you'll see some footage that, uh, you know, it's a big enough boom. Uh, it's quite clear that it's not an airstrike, and there's oftentimes a lot of discussion as to what munition it could be. Well, it's under most circumstances going to likely be the Iron Sting, which, again, is a laser-guided mortar system. can be very accurate. Is there going to be an after stream stream? Yeah, we're going to kick back with a beer and um, hang out over on the small vlog channel that I have. What's your favorite handgun? Uh, thanks to the Funker team, you're the best. Well, it depends on for what purpose. Uh, my favorite gun to shoot competition with is my P320 DH3, and my favorite carry gun is my MR920. I also like carrying uh, a G48, though. You know, all of them, any of them, they're all better in a sharp stick. Interesting video here at this location of a controlled detonation. If this is the video that I think it is, I really think I just recorded this one because of it being higher quality. Yeah, oh yeah. Now, this is reportedly, again, uh, uh, under most circumstances, I'm working with like secondary and tertiary sources here, reportedly after raids that took place to clear the building. So they, are, they have effectively cleared this building, and now what they are doing is using the Yidus Deletus spell so that it's not used by Hamas again. And it's gone. I do, according to the IDF, have footage of the supposed raids, I use that plurality purposefully, that took place around the area. This is what they said. Uh, I can't geolocate this to the same spot, though. Just this is was the accompanying footage. This one, this kind of made me laugh a little bit, right? So I'm, I'm, I, I know, I know what they're looking at, I, right? I get it that there's some likelihood that that is a Hamas tunnel, but at face value, it looks like they're just staring down a sewer, right? I wish I would, I wish I had more detail about what specifically they were looking at, but to me, that looks just that looks like a sewer. You know, I don't know, uh, could be Hamas tunnel. There are Hamas tunnels. There are Israeli tunnels that were built that are now being used by Hamas. But that looks like a sewer. Anyway, that's that's about the end of the video. Just more footage of them. All right, jumping into our uh, no geolocation section of the stream. I'm kind of moving through the footage here tonight. We have Shaldag which is an Israeli Air Force IAF Special Forces unit. We're actually going to watch um, an interesting archive video. You've seen Sheldag before, uh, but it was from October 7th when they were responding to Hamas's invasion. Here's some footage of them currently. Then we're going to hit the Wayback Machine. Doggy. Mm, 
Kevin, thanks again for the five. There's no audio to this portion of the video. Uh, they're doing, you know, SSE here, clearing out this building. Those unfamiliar with SSE, sensitive site exploitation, taking anything and everything that they can to build, you know, some semblance of understanding of uh, the way Hamas operates, the locations that they use, the capabilities that they have. All right, let's hit the rewind button on Sheldak and go back to October 7th at Kibbutz Bieri. At Kibbutz Bieri, uh, these assholes, uh, these are Hamas, on their way to assault Kibbutz Bieri, get intercepted, uh, in, run into Sheldak. And it kind of goes sideways for white car Hamas here. No sound. Hey, formidable Frank. I see you out there. Thank you guys for all of the membership renewals. Appreciate you very much. Is this an extended version? Yes, it is. This is the longest version of this video that I'm tracking. You've shown this video before. Correct, Vaughn. Yeah, this we're showing this as additional context to the video that we just watched, like I said. Doggy. We're going to see some dogs here in a minute. All right, let's bring it up. So, again... We watched uh, an initial video of Shaldag and some of their operations just prior to the ceasefire in Gaza. And what I wanted to provide is additional context from a video perspective that we are tracking um, for Shaldag. So, uh, speaking of dogs, I got some fur missile action for you. Mm, and, and it's more than just fur missiles here. So fur missiles kind of bite dogs is, is kind of how I've always looked at that, you know, so they hunt humans. Uh, but it looks like we also have explosives detection dogs here. אני הסתכלתי מתחת למיטה, הוא סיים מתחת למיטה, יש כמו חבית עם חוט. אני לא יודע להגיד מה זה, חבית כחולה. שווה עוד פעם הסתכלות, אבל הוא התיישב. Now this is reportedly the OKETS unit, O-K-E-T-Z. And I want to say Josh put out a tweet and in, you know, kind of a... I wouldn't say announcement, just helping people understand the, the job that these dogs are doing. So far, if, unless something has changed, four IDF working dogs have been killed in Gaza to date. The combat booties get me every time. Yep. All right. Bring it up. I'm going to be getting into some uh, IDF ground combat. You know, uh, there's really no other way to describe this type of footage. Uh, this is Sayeret Nahal taking prisoners, finding weapons. Uh, I don't know exactly where this takes place in Gaza. Uh, just that it is in Gaza. I got to keep the uh, sound off on this one, though. I've been getting slapped around for copyright problems, which is unfortunate because, you know, video is always such an imperfect lens as it is, um, having the, the video itself is good. Having the audio is even better. Nothing will provide the same amount of context as actually being there. Uh, but having sound that is uninterrupted by, 
music will always make it a little bit better. I want to pause here for a second. Somebody asked a question, and I am going to turn the sound on for this. Uh, I want to say maybe last week we were reviewing some footage of a hand grenade being thrown, and there was a loud pop as soon as it left uh, the soldier's hand. And there was... uh, One of the things that I was saying is that that is, you know, effectively the fuse. And there was a question in the chat, you know, why would it be that loud? That I want you to hear this. That's exactly what that is. Hear that? So that is the the grenade arming itself. And actually, wow, I nailed that right there. So we'll watch it one more time. Back to the footage. No Palestinian perspective videos. We will be seeing some footage uh, released by Hamas here soon. We have um, one of their most recent videos. Actually, in uh, one, two videos, we're going to see some Hamas footage. Yeah, Brandon, it's not going to be unlike, um, you know, the other Hamas releases. A lot of a lot of RPGs with, without a whole lot of understanding what happens after they were fired. But before we get to that Hamas video, a little bit more from the IDF here. We can play sound on this one, though. talking about Momoto. Nobody said those were Hamas. All right. As requested, um, one of Hamas's latest releases, uh, fresh from the website. Well, it's not, not very fresh because again, there hasn't been a whole lot of footage released of combat operations since mid the middle of last week, largely because of the ceasefire. Neither wants to be uh, in the information space blamed for violating the ceasefire. So publishing things during the ceasefire is going to lead people to believe what? Here we go. Any word on when the new merch is going to be available? Yeah, yeah, we're looking at, like, right at the beginning of the year, I think. But that's just going to be, like, wearables. So as far as, like, cups and stuff like that, we're working on getting something up a little bit sooner. You know, something, something... Hold on, pause. Time out. While we're watching this, something that I continue to see floating around is how many Merkavas and Israeli uh, personnel, armored personnel ca- carriers are being, quote, destroyed because of this big fireball that you see there. And I continue to talk about this. Nobody knows how many tanks or vehicles Hamas has destroyed. Each of these could very well be, including that big fireball that you see, the active protection system engaging that incoming rocket-propelled grenade. Even the tandem warhead RPGs, which are more specifically designed for passive protection systems, 
like the fancy ceramic armor that's out there, even explosive reactive armor that's out there, again, that are passively protecting, not necessarily actively protecting. That's what the tandem dong on the front RPGs are designed to defeat. Where it starts to get interesting to flip the coin over is the closer you are to those Merkavas, the less time that APS has to react and to destroy that round before it's able to hit the tank. The way the, way the, the Windbreaker trophy works is it actually sends out a bunch of chaff. Right? It detects the round, the, the incoming RPG sends out a bunch of chaff and destroys the incoming projectile. It doesn't currently work on... Uh, you know, kinetic energy projectiles. So things like Sabo, um, uh, you know, essentially things that uh, don't have an explosive charge. Um, but the closer you are to it, that's where it starts having a more difficult time. So there is still, based on the proximity of some of these Hamas fighters to these Merkava tanks, a possibility that quite a few of these have at least taken... Uh, mission kills. Quite a few of these Merkavas have taken mission kills, mobility kills. But nobody knows how many have been destroyed. Let's go back to the footage. Like this shot, for example. Just given his proximity to the tank or his distance from the tank, if that is a Merkava with the trophy system on it, which presumably it does have one, what you are more than likely seeing here is the trophy system engaging that projectile. More than likely. There is a context that we don't have, what which way the tank is facing, whether the trophy system was, you know, active or damaged in some way. There's plenty of, you know, siloed scenarios where that could could actually just be the Merkava being hit. But that active protection system is designed specifically for this. And there is plenty of runway between Hamas and that tank for the APS to engage there. But ultimately, we don't know. Again, like I said, I'm not saying that each of these strikes is a defeat. And this kind of, this, hold on a second. This kind of shit's ballsy. All right. I made some jokes like early on in this about playing jump out with like Merkavas and stuff. And then Hamas is absolutely playing jump out with APCs, uh, which we're looking at here and Merkavas. That's absolutely what they're doing, right? I th I'm, he's going to in place like a um, uh, anti-armor type grenade here. I want to say it might be magnetic. That's why it's still sitting that way. Uh, how exactly it detonates, I'm not 100% certain. I haven't done a whole lot of research into this, but this is ballsy. Ballsy, to say the least. Like a magnetic mine or something, maybe. Battle chemist says limpet mine. And if you were to go, just to kind of close this thought out, if you were to go and you were to look up put myself down here. If you were to go and just look up trophy system and the photos and imagery, uh, essentially the signature of what the trophy system looks like when it engages, that's what it looks like. Big fireball, right? That's why nobody truly knows exactly how many of these are trophy kills, how many of these, uh, you know, effectively were mobility kills on the Merkava or mission kills on it. Um, nobody has that answer. The only person that does know is going to be 
those that can see the aftermath. Hamas continues to not show the aftermath of these of these hits. Dogs barking. That's it from that video from Hamas. The, that last clip there is, you know, supposed to be them, look, you know, watching the IDF. Uh, but we, it's an interesting perspective, right? Um, you know, first you're looking through some bars at the IDF and then you're looking at Hamas and then you don't see the IDF anymore, but you see Hamas and they open up and start firing. I don't know. Interesting one. But, excuse me. We have one more. Speaking of Hamas ground operations, I'm going to show you guys some footage here of Hamas uh, coming out of the ground to do operations. This doesn't go well. Just for, you know, translation, they're effectively telling them to put down their weapons. You know, come out, put down your weapons. And they do come out with AKs. They, they have guns. He just dropped a gun there. Uh, let me see if I can give you a little bit of quality. Nope. This is the best quality we have. There it is. There's the gun. Yeah, there's the gap. He just threw out. Why do the Hamas videos look like Israel is losing? But that, I, that's what they're designed for. Like, that's the purpose of them, is to sh make it look like their adversary is losing, garner popular support, uh, and hopefully erode um, popular support for Israel. That's what propaganda is, right? Uh, it's the same function and purpose of any other organization that puts out video, officially. Right. The video, you're going to have two kinds of video. You'll have official releases, right? So the Ukraine, Russia stuff, you'll have the, the Russian Ministry of Defense footage and the same thing on the Ukrainian side. Then you'll have like on ground camera recorded stuff, which under most circumstances is going to be a real reality footage. In Gaza, uh, from Hamas, you have official releases, not unlike any other Ministry of Defense, right? The, uh, Israel does the same. Uh, under most circumstances, both Israel and Hamas in their official releases, the official things that they are publishing specific to ground operations against their adversary are going to be designed for the sole purpose of leading you to believe that they individually are winning. That's the purpose of it. Let's move on, though. So we have... We're, we're, that's actually what I have, I believe, for Israel. Josh said he had something for me on the website, so I'm going to go and look at it. Uh, actually, that's the one that we just watched, buddy. Anyway, that's what we have for Israel. Uh, we're going to be moving to Myanmar. I want to check in on the anti-junta forces, and see what they've got going on against uh, in their fight against the government. I don't know what that is, but here it is. That's a slingshot. Hey. <laughs> They're launching dynamite. Is it low? Is it low? 
<laughs> and they're having a good time doing it. Okay, <laughs> Ronnie, another well-known YouTuber named, quote, The Russian Dude mentioned Russia has like 6,000 miles of tunnels under Ukraine. Any thoughts? Uh, no, not really. I'd love to know what his source is for that. Hey, Blackjack, thanks for the $2. And thanks for becoming a member, man. I don't know, I had a good time watching this uh, the first time. We're going to be switching over to, speaking of Ukraine, the war in Ukraine. Uh, where we're going to spend the first little bit of time talking about this, just the massive storm that's going on in the Black Sea. But first, let's bring up the map. So we're going to head over to Deep State for this. Coming up for you now. So there's a, an absolute massive storm. I've seen footage coming out of Odessa of you know what is effectively a blizzard. Uh, there are a lot of people talking about potential impacts of this storm to... Uh, Crimea. And uh, I put out a bolo, you know, be on the lookout for any footage or documentation that you can find about impacts to military infrastructure in Crimea, specifically from this storm. Now, just to give you a better understanding of what kind of storm I'm talking about, it ain't good. And it, this is like a big, big storm. Here you go. Check this out. This is Crimea. Песочница уже не в бассейне. Все, первый этаж. До свидания. Now, not too, not too long ago, uh, I did a video breaking down some of the fortifications that Russia was putting in place on the Crimean coast. Those are probably gone. Now they were plywood. They were made out of plywood. Um, and it's quite apparent that this is a big wave that's coming across. But there's still more footage, though, to just help you understand what that looks like, including this house that collapsed. And I want to say this is actually Sochi. That meme, thank you for the $10. Fishing day fun, don't want you to get it too grumpy doing all this. Thanks for that. Spartan no negative, thank you for the five. I'm tracking battle chemists, appreciate it. All right. Now I wanna to move to some of the combat footage though. So big storm, if you guys do run into footage specifically to the impacts of the storms that are taking place uh, in the Black Sea. If you guys run into footage or photos, you know, we're super interested to see what the potential impacts are of that storm to specifically military infrastructure. There are plenty of reports, and I'm not going to regurgitate those because under most circumstances, there are regurgitation of secondary and tertiary sources on like Telegram. I want to see footage. I want to see uh, satellite imagery. I want to see something that can help us better understand that impact. Please tag us in it, at Funker Actual on Twitter. Uh, you're welcome to tag me personally if you want to, at Ronnie Adkins underscore. You can tag Josh at F530Josh underscore, I believe, uh, at Will underscore Kilmore. If you go and find our Funker 530 uh, Twitter account, which is where we're probably the most active, all of our team 
accounts are listed right in the uh, description there. We're going to move to Crinky, though. Here. Talk a little bit about the Ukrainian bridgehead that continues to expand. Now, the footage we're about to watch takes place here. Let's head over to Google Earth, and we're going to take a plane ride on Google Earth over to Ukraine. You know, takes place right here. Okay. It's Russian perspective footage, technically, I guess, of a BTR engaging Ukrainian positions in Krinky. Only it, uh, but well, here you go. На вогневу позицію і давай навалювати у нашу сторону. Тим часом F7 вже піднялися екстрено повітря. Ти головне все дочекай. Пару хвилин нам потрібно. Щоб за тебе дібратися сучесько. Ну от уже в повітрі. Часу обмаль темнішає, підор веде вогонь і скоро накиває п'яти. Треба встигнути. Тим часом Хробочевська вже відпрацював. So, just a note. What you're going to see here, <clears throat> that, is, that is a steep embankment right there behind that uh, with another blown up vehicle at the bottom of it. Just heads up. Just context. Робить маневр для розвороту, щоб здреснути. Оп! And it stopped. Давай, Хробача, ще. Дозарийся ще трохи. Ще секунду. Опа! І пасточка. Добре. Чекай. Недовго. Хвилина 20 секунд. Рекорд часу підльоту. Зафіксований. Хробаки лише вивантажуються з того бетера. And there's that vehicle that I told you. Uh, here's the BTR. Вот тут тупикну на секундочку про того я вам нагадаю, як ми його теж з півіхами гепнули. А тут по нахилу стає зрозуміло, чого він потрапив у ту пастку і не зміг з неї за ту хвилину вибратися і не знайшов нічого кращого, якщо правильно драпанути. Ну та й па! Воно біжить хрубак. Пада бум! Он другий. Хвилина 25 момент выхода. Пада бум! Хвилина 30 момент прихода. Мы заходим, мы его видим. And I think this is just kind of continues on with him talking about this BTR. Todd, thank you for the $10. All fortifications on the beach in Crimea now being used for surfboards. <laughs> thank you for the 10 man. <laughs> All right. And then for those that, you know, figured, well, it's going to be fine. It was only hit with one or, I don't know, 20, however many FPV drones. It's now burning up. And yeah, things toast. And it's gone. And there it goes. <laughs> you know, I, just the way he said it was funny. That's funny. All right. Talking a little bit more about Crinky. Give you a location for this. If you think, I mean, it hasn't been too swimmingly, but here we're going to see footage of Ukrainians with at least some level of freedom of maneuver. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right there. Stop. 
There we go. With some level of freedom of maneuver. When I say that, you know, they're kind of walking around. This is contextual type footage. Kind of walking around, doing whatever the hell they want. Now, we will see footage of Russian strikes hitting the same general location. But from a certain perspective, Ukraine has solidified some level of hold there and continues to widen that. Сплошная разруха. Вампир. Скажи привет. Подзвуки новогодние. Пошел он нахуй этот дрончик, заебали они меня уже. I don't know when exactly that was recorded. It was, you know, presumably sometime within the last week to two weeks. But Ukraine has essentially set conditions for that by using a massive amount of FPV drones. There's going to be, uh, there's like 15 in this compilation that we're about to watch. I normally don't show a whole lot of these. There isn't anything nasty in this one. Under under too many circumstances, it's kind of overly gory for the purposes of being overly gory. But this just helps you understand the density of Ukraine's FPV drones. You know, that's not to speak to the you know, Russia not using a lot of FPV drones. But all of these took place inside of basically this little, these two blocks here. Every single one of these that you're about to watch took place inside of these two blocks. It's a lot. Here you are. I'm going to keep the sound off on it, though. Just reading through the chat here, guys. Did you see the one of a drone drop another drone to increase? I did. Yep. Yeah. Droneception. Wild stuff. Crazy stuff uh, south of the border. Minigun from a Blackhawk versus an arm... Armored pickup and technical footage. I did see that one. Yep. I want to say we got that one put up on the website. Do we know if this is VDV or mobilized? No. No, I don't. Uh, I think you could probably use the UA control map for a good understanding of the last known locations. I want to say the UA control map might be linked in the stream description. I haven't checked in a while. Where'd you get the hoodie? Uh, this is the best soft layer I've ever owned, and I got it from a company called Terra Arma. I don't make any money if you go and buy one of these, uh, but I am just that much of a fan of it. I love this. I wouldn't even call it a hoodie. It's so much more than that. Like, it, calling it a hoodie doesn't know justice. You, know, you can wear this outside in you know 15 degree blizzard winds. Or at least I feel like I can. Um, it's really good. Yeah. So much better than just a hoodie. Sometime, presumably after those FPV strikes, Ukraine took that ground, but then started receiving artillery from Russia. Here is Russian artillery hitting those Ukrainian positions all within a block of all those FPV strikes.
Ronnie will have to cope. What am I coping with today? You tell me. Avdivka is 90% captured. No, it isn't. We'll see photo. We'll see video of Russia's gains in Avdivka today. Uh, we'll geolocate those. Terra Arma. Correct. Terra Arma. Did we really hit 1,000 likes on the stream? Thank you guys for that very much. And it's an easy way to support the stream. Is it the Wanderer hoodie? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, again, yeah, I, I understand everybody's looking at it as like it's a hoodie. Think of it as, you know, extreme cold weather soft layer, right? It is so much more than just a hoodie. You're looking at it as though it's, you know, purchased from, you know, some random merch shop. It, there's a lot of technology in it. Uh, and I actually got it discounted. So when we met them at MCON, I thought they were really awesome. They also have a really awesome podcast. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to steal any of their thunder on that, but they, they had this little wheel that you had to spin and, and dependent upon where you landed on the wheel, you could get a percentage off. Well, I landed on the 50% off if you did 50 pushups. So I, I, I did my 50 and I got 50% off of the hoodie. Anyway. It's a really, it's a really good soft layer. There's a reason I call it a soft layer, not a hoodie. We're going to head to Donetsk. Don, Donetsk. We're going to talk about Avdivka and the ground that Russia has recently taken in Avdivka. We've talked about this fight quite a bit, actually. And we're going to talk about the Yazinovatsky, I think I got that, industrial area here in Avdivka. So here is Avdivka for whichever one of you said it's 90% captured. I I don't know. We're going to see footage all throughout here of Russia, essentially as they brought personnel in and Ukraine as they withdrew from this small industrial area just outside of Avdivka. Now we're also going to see footage uh, from the north up here of Ukrainian Bradleys operating along this road, then kind of making their way up here and eventually finding contact and engaging uh, pr probably this tree line. But we'll get there when we get there. Very first thing, though, is I want to go to Google Earth so we can get a better understanding of the layout here. This is where this footage takes place. Here. Need to orient this. And something I actually find super interesting is we're already looking at satellite imagery uh, that's a little bit more up to date than you know the stuff we're used to seeing. We're used to still we're used to still seeing, you know, intact buildings. We're starting to see the destruction of some of these areas. All right? We'll see a lot of footage of these two buildings tonight. I want to say two or three. Um, you know, we'll see some Russians as they're, you know, moving in and around here. You can actually see a trench line here. That's interesting. You know, on Google Maps or on Google Earth, you don't often see this. This is an area that looks like it's had a very recent pass. Anyway. Here is a Russian tank engaging Ukrainian positions. And as it continues to engage, Ukrainians are forced to withdraw. Well, I think this is the withdrawal. Withdrawal. Yeah, this is their withdrawal. So I kind of showed it to you backwards. These are Ukrainians withdrawing up that road towards Avdivka, Maine from the industrial area. And then to see some of that tank, I believe it's this one. Yeah, this is a little bit longer of a video. About four minutes long. We should be watching most of it, though. Here's that Russian tank.
And the geolocation that I gave you was the geolocation of this tank. You can go back and look at that. Hey, Carrie, thanks very much for stopping by. There's more imagery of those Ukrainians as they're m making their way out of that industrial area into Avdivka, Maine. Abrams spotted yet. Yeah, there, there was a photo that was floating around on Twitter uh, within the last 48 hours or so of an Abrams with woodland camo. It's presumably in Ukraine with Ukrainians sitting on it, but video of Abrams in action I have yet to see. Mm, Grim underscore mod. So Ukraine is using human shields. That might be one of the stupidest things that I've read today. It is a Ukrainian town that more or less has been evacuated of all civilians, and Ukraine is now setting up a defensive posture in the town to keep it from being taken by Russia. So it's kind of it's kind of like the argument of, you know, well, Churchill shouldn't have deployed fortifications inside of London to defend it from Germany. That's pretty dumb. Uh, FF2, you're very welcome. Grim, you're drawing a correlation on two things that have zero things in common. It's kind of like an apple, not even apples to oranges, because they're not even they're not even both like fruits. You know, it's kind of like apples to peanut butter. Dan, just miss a sale on Terra Arma. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, we do hope that we're probably going to work with them a little bit in the future. Um, so maybe there's something that'll come out of it there. Apples and peanut butter is delicious. Yeah, it's one of my favorite snacks. Who's all who? I'm late. We're watching Ukrainians withdraw from, I'm going to try and pronounce it again, Yazinovatsky, an industrial area just to the southeast of Avdivka. Uh, that Russia recently took. All right, let's bring it up. Uh, more footage of presumably the same tank here. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not the greatest quality footage in the world, so it just looks the same. So more, more Russian perspective footage of that tank is what looks like it kind of rolls in here. Can you show show us where this was again? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll look at that right at the end of this one. We're only about two minutes on this video. Thanks, TK. Appreciate that very much. I can't wait to hear what Ronnie has to say when Russia wins. Uh, I mean, define winning, but if ultimately... Russia wins, I will say Russia won. I don't I don't know 
what else you expect me to say. When Ukraine gains ground, I, re I show you guys footage of Ukraine, Ukraine gaining ground. When Russia gains ground, I show you footage of Russia gaining ground. I hope Ukraine kicks Russia out of its country. I have no vested interest financially or physically in Ukraine. He's got some haters this week. Ah, oh, it's all good, man. Bunch of soft bodies. Not worried about it. All right. We're coming towards the end of this with just more footage of Ukraine as they are rotating out. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but these are these are Russians. Wearing interesting attire. Um, I want to show you the map, though. Just that way you can understand where you're... What's going on? So let's go back here. Uh, button, button. So you're about to watch Russians move from this building, uh, basically this way, into this side of that building. And just to give you a better understanding of where this is on the grand scheme of the campaign map, or I don't know, the country map. So, you know, red would be Russian held areas, green are areas that Russia previously held that Ukraine took back. And as we scroll in here, we're looking at this industrial area, specifically right here-ish, I think. But back to Google Earth. They're going to be moving from this building into that building. Here you are. I think it's a thermal blanket. I can't tell if, like, he's trying to hide his thermal signature from a drone. I'm not certain. Uh, but in the daytime, he's just shiny. That hoodie looks comfy AF. Yeah, so much more than just a hoodie, though. All right, let's bring it up. We've watched the thermal technology long enough. I want to show you guys something, though, because... And we've talked about the fight in Avdivka before, and there's footage to support it. You know, again, I don't mean to just... I don't mean to play the middle. But everybody should be should understand where I stand relative to the war in Ukraine. I hope Ukraine ultimately kicks Russia out, right? I have other feelings about you know financial aid and military aid, um, but they're personal, right? Not necessarily specific to the footage. When Ukrainian columns were being destroyed in Zaporizhia, that's the footage that we were watching. When Russian columns in Avdivka are being destroyed, not to detract from their gains of that small in industrial area. That's the footage we're watching. Each one of these vehicles is a Russian vehicle that has been destroyed to the southwest of Avdivka. I have an exact location for this. This is just one small lens into a larger front. Something to keep in mind. Hey, dude, when are you streaming next time? Well, uh, immediately after this stream, we have our just chatting stream where we'll kick back over on my personal channel. Uh, I'll have a beer and, I don't know, talk about karate or something. And then the next one should be tomorrow on my gaming channel. Then Thursday on the same channel. And then Friday back here on the Funker channel. Playing Tarkov, ah, I got a lot of hours in Tarkov, but there's not much that's dragging me back there. I'm going to give you guys two geolocations. The first is going to be the geolocation of the video we just watched, which is here. Again, to that southwest of Evdivka. That's kind of west by southwest, I guess. Maybe straight west. I think that's straight west. That's straight west, isn't it? No, it's, no, it's southwest. I nailed it. 
So that's what we just looked at out here. The envelopment of, of Avdivka is still very much a thing, though. You know, just like you can see in the map. Still enveloped. Still a lot of pressure from Russia to continue that envelopment. Avdivka itself has turned into a salient. But in the north, one of those axes where Russia has taken a lot of uh, both vehicle and personnel casualties. We're going to watch two videos here. One of a Bradley as it makes its way along this along this road. Uh, it eventually, in a break to the video, cuts right. And we're going to see a second video of it as it's engaging Russian positions up here. That video is coming up for you now. Now this might, I might actually have these two videos backwards uh, because it looks to me like they're actually moving southeast in this. Um, but the engagement took place here. So probably should have flipped these around. Nothing's perfect. Here is the location of the engagement that we're about to watch. Yeah, nailed it. So you'll actually see him firing over a berm, you know, into this I don't know, general direction in the Bradley. So that previous video could have been uh, at the end of this engagement. Might have had it backwards. Coming up for you now. Let's bring it up. Uh, Todd, thank you for the $10. Uh, what, did, what did that say? You got to be sitting in your silkies because you can't afford pants. I am wearing silkies tonight after buying that hoodie. So again, you guys are calling it a hoodie and I shouldn't have called it a hoodie. It's an extreme cold weather soft layer, right? So it's much more than just a hoodie. And I got it at a discount because I went to a convention where they were there and they were running a special on it. Just putting that out there. Uh, I have one more Ukraine video. It's I have it in the general section here, and we're going to do a little bit of training tonight. Now I'm going to we're going to watch this, and I'm going to monitor the chat. Be advised on this one. A little bit not safe for work. Um, the audio might get to you if you're squeamish or anything. We're going to watch a Ukrainian doing uh, you know some self aid here. Um, he is effectively applying a tourniquet to himself after receiving what looks to be a mid or maybe an injury around the knee. Hard to tell exactly where it is, but there's a hole in his pants at about his knee. So discretion's advised on this one, but we'll talk through it. And here's the footage. Uh, headphone warning. Я триста. Я триста. 
just to note what what he's saying and he's going to repeat saying it is i'm wounded trista 300 is the code the ukrainian code for wounded uh 200 would have been killed so he's saying ya trista uh, and i know i'm not rolling my r's enough on that but i am wounded ya trista ya trista ya trista ya trista All right, now let's talk about this one now that you have an understanding of what happened. When, when this first kind of hit the airwaves, I saw a whole lot of non-essential vitamin stuff. Like, it's not spurting blood. Why is he putting a tourniquet on it? Well, spurting blood, yeah, I get it, right? Uh, a tourniquet under, you know, kind of normal circumstances is one of the last things that you want to do, largely because of the potential damage that you could do to the limb. In a TCCC scenario, you know, uh, Tactical combat casualty care. Uh, it's actually one of the first things that you want to do. You don't want to waste your time trying to do deep dive diagnoses on uh, whatever kind of wound on an extremity that you have. You place that tourniquet high and tight until you can get yourself to a triage area where they can do a deeper look. There's a possibility he could be hemorrhaging internally here. We don't know. Uh, that is something that we've seen kind of consistently in Ukraine is uh, you know, we've seen arms shot, uh, you know, clipped, nicked. They are trained, and rightly so, to apply a tourniquet high and tight and move themselves to a triage area. Now, they need to get to that triage area because the longer that tourniquet stays under there, stays on there, and in an ideal scenario, you're able to put the time that it was placed on there so whomever is going to provide you advanced care can you know, better understand any potential damage to the limb, but they need to get to a triage center because uh, it needs to be evaluated further and treated so that the tourniquet can come off and the limb can be saved. Uh, but that's something that I wanted to talk about a little bit because a lot of people seem to believe that the only time you should apply a tourniquet in this type of situation is if you, you're arterial and blood is spurting everywhere. That's absolutely not the case. Uh, you know, it, you need to get that tourniquet on there and either put yourself back into the fight as fast as possible uh, or get yourself to a triage area as fast as possible. All right. I got one more video for you guys, and I kind of nailed the timeline tonight. Uh, somebody asked a question about the sizing on these. Um, I would say they fit perfect, right? Now, it's going to be a little stiff if you guys do decide to get one. Uh, it's going to be a little stiff. Again, I don't make any money if you guys do this. Please tell them we sent you over there, by the way, uh, because we're big fans. Uh, I just like what they're doing, right? There's actual like technology. It's good stuff. It's not your basic run of the mill hoodie. Uh, it, again, it's a, it, it's a system. Uh, please tell them that we sent you over there because we would, we would love to maybe do some work deeper with them, but I do have one more video for you guys tonight and I'm going to, I'm going to be clowning. I'm sorry. It's just going to happen. I got to go to our Twitter. We're going to, we're going to stop in Russia on our way out of here. We're going to see two versions of a video. One is the original video, and the other is one that I personally edited. I don't know. Oh, we're going to see two videos. First, we got to watch this one. Uh, we're, we got three more videos to watch. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, here is anti-aircraft fire that I wanted to show you guys. Coming up. I can't stop watching it. I must have watched this, but I don't know, about 500 times, dude. Oof. When I, when I uh, sent this out on X, I purposefully didn't include who it was because it doesn't matter. It didn't matter if this was Ukrainians. It didn't matter if this was Russian. This is Russian. He's Russian. Uh, he's wearing a Russian jacket and multicam pants, uh, but he's Russian. But anyway, the, the Russians I wanted to talk about. Right. And I realize I'm picking a little bit on Russians here. Uh, we're going to play two versions of this video. I'm not going to tell you which one is edited. Uh, you're going to have to guess for yourself. I don't know when this took place. I'm not certain. But here you are. Hey, DP, I'm 
Не подходи. Не подходи. Вот придурок, а. He's still in the van. He's still in the van. Эй, она быстро утонет. Ты что, вылазь, бля, придурок? Why is he still in the van? Hey, 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 you bunny broad! Yeah, brother, open the bag. Boy, the thing, the mop. Open it, open it, open it. Open it, open it. Open it, open it. All right, I think this was the edited version of that, though. Um, because I happened to come across this version. This will be it for us, guys. Uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you on the follow-up stream where we'll have some beers and uh, maybe hang out for a little bit. Talk a little bit more about my hoodie that's not a hoodie. Uh, and we'll see you guys again, subject to the baby's arrival. I don't know. When the baby gets here, we're not streaming for at least a week. But thanks for being here. Good night. And stay informed.